What's up, Manifesto fam? Here I am at the Heidi Baker Conference here in Orlando, where I'm just walking up. This is the last day. There's four sessions. Uh, a lot. I've already been here two, two days already, and just receiving so much from the presence of the Lord, from the family of God. So it's been such a special treat to be here, to have Iris come to Orlando. It's such a blessing if any Iris missionaries or leaders are watching, we lo I love you. Thank you for the influence you've had on my life and my, our community. A lot of our here Orlando community is here receiving from this weekend. So thank you for all your labor in the Lord. I remember the first time I saw Heidi, uh, I was in Northport at a conference as well as at one of their conferences. And I would just say that I saw an, an embodiment of humility and love. That, those are the two characteristics I would give it, is that someone that's willing to give themselves away to people. We're gonna get inside. We might have a few talks with some people that wanna testify about Jesus and what he's doing in their lives through the presence of the Lord here at the conference. So stick around, it's gonna be a good day. We'll see what the Lord has for us. Let's go. Getting closer to God turns into work, you, you got going at it the wrong way. Yeah. In prayer or devotion or intercession or service or preaching or ministry, anything that turns into work, it's not the funnest thing you can think of doing. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't have to prove anything to God or anybody. He is at work in you. He is creating the relationship that you have. You don't have to come up with it. You don't have to make yourself love God more. You can't. You can try, but it's not the real thing. What if someone talked talk to you that way? I would like to love you more, but I, and I can't, but I'm trying really hard, and I'm, so I say thank you very much. That blesses my heart. Warning. This vlog may be disturbing to some of you that are not used to the things that go on. The lady basically came to me and she said, you gotta let it out. And I was like, okay, what I'm gonna let it out? I have no idea. And she's like, if you want Jesus, you need to be like, like completely undignified. Like, are you ready for that? I was like, I don't know what it means. Kind of like, okay, I was like, Jesus, Jesus. You know, like we all do like this nice Christian, like Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I need more. She's like, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. On the tip of your lungs, I want you to be like, un like seriously, completely like shame yourself in front of everybody so everybody would stare at you, look at you, but you're going to be set on fire. So I was like, Jesus. She's like, that's not it. That's not it. You can louder. You can be louder. And in my head, it's playing like, Jenny, you're too loud. Everybody's staring at you right now. Everybody, people are praying. You're disturbing them. Like, thousand things going through my mind. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be indignified because of you, Jesus. I want you more. He's like, Jesus, <laughs> I want more of you. It must be more. Yeah. And when I said, I lost my voice immediately. And then the fire just like boom in my heart. It's wow. like you just let it out. And that's when the fire started. Wow. It just like it immediately started. But I was like out, completely sold out. Jesus! Wow. And my voice is back. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Wow. So That's good. Awesome. We're just so good. I just realized there's seriously so many things that are holding us back. Yeah. It's like, you know, what people would say, or you're disturbing someone, kind of like being politically correct, not being too loud. Oh, you don't have, just like, you see, this is what normal means. This is not normal. Normal means it's what's in your head, what God created for you completely, like totally yeah. only for you. For me, normal is be me. And she's like, God wants you to be you. And I was like, this is who I am, you know? I'm gonna be loud for Jesus and I don't care what people say. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. like, hallelujah, amen. Jet, Jet, what, what's the Lord doing in your heart? 
This won't be going anywhere, because I want to sign a release if it is. <laughs> I will not be signing any forms tonight. So I do not want this. Don't anymore. worry. This is just Jesus Manifesto. This is, uh, you know, this is the Jesus people. I always they're going to know that they can do this kind of stuff. I don't know. They did it in the gospel when it was written back in the day without a quote. Just say it is written. It is written. <laughs> <laughs> Men shall not live on bread alone. <laughs> there you go. Men shall not live on social media alone. Ooh. But everywhere that comes out of the Father's mouth, you find that in the book. Not by preachers talking through whatever. It's a powerful tool, and I bless it. Whoa! But every word that comes from his mouth is more powerful than any word that comes out of any man's mouth. So that's what he's doing in my heart in the moment. <laughs> So, this weekend here at the conference was incredible. I just, for me, I always come to this back to this place of just extreme hunger for Jesus and just recognizing how much He is the most important thing above all. And this weekend was one of those weekends of just being with the Irish crew and just like getting fired up for more of what matters most. And Jesus is gold. And so. Another thing that really touched me was on the first day of the session, Heidi Baker was on her face on the platform, just being prayed over, and um, and her just laying there and allowing leaders, Brother Young and a few other leaders, just to pray for her and just doing nothing but just receiving, really touched my heart, showing that even I don't care where you're at in ministry, you always need to receive. And so, um, yeah, it just moved, it moved me and validated even that, that life of reception that no matter where you're at, you know, we're, we're here to serve, but then we're here to receive. And so knowing when to do that is really crucial. So I, I enjoyed seeing her on the platform. Uh, she wasn't even ministering that night, but uh, the speaker called her up and she was just receiving on her face for, I think she was there a good, at least hour, if not two, just on her face even towards the end. So anyways, that, that really uh, motivated my heart as well to just see that um, leadership doing that. So yeah, that was cool. Okay, so as I was in worship, I was just like leaning on the Lord and just really thinking about His presence and just really trying to encounter Him and just seeing what He wanted for my life as opposed to like asking Him for things. And uh, in that moment, my feet got so stuck to the ground that it felt like I couldn't move them. And so every time that I was like almost falling back in the spirit to fall out, my feet were planted so strongly that the girl had to physically help me fall back and lay down. And as soon as I laid down, I've never uh, convulsed before, but I started convulsing under the power of God. And I started just encountering him in a new way and like just seeing like the brightness and the light that he is and that in him there is no darkness. And the reality that when he's here with me, there's no darkness that can withstand his glory. Everything has to be, and that is just, I think it's just changed my perspective on my current position, the current season in my life, and that I really do, um, in the midst of darkness, have the power to eliminate darkness because I bear the name of Jesus. Yeah, so that's what I kind of feel like he did today, and it's really fun. Yeah. So I want to talk about three phrases that have most impacted my life that Heidi Baker, I think, has coined. Number one is lay down lovers. I love that term because lay down lovers speaks of two things. That love lays down its life. Uh, and it speaks of a people of a generation that have so fallen in love with Jesus, with following Him, that they're willing to do whatever it takes. They're willing to go wherever they needs to be gone, they're willing to do whatever needs to be done for the sake of love. And to be a lay down lover means that um, you, you just have a heart of yes because you've fallen in love. And we know that ultimately it's because we've encountered the love of God, we've been loved on by God, and we can then love Him and love others rightly because we've received love from the Father. So. Term number one, lay down lovers. Term number two is 
lower still. I love that phrase because it speaks of um, what is necessary for us to receive from God. For us to receive, we must find ourselves at the lowest place. And so many times in my life, that uh, that phrase is comes back to my mind, even when I'm wanting to present myself even lowly, I, you know, I, I go on the ground and I remember those phrases lower still. I, Lord, however it looks like to go low in this season in my life, in a circumstance, in a situation, in a relationship, in a moment of time, let me continue. I'm, I'm reminded by that phrase that there's still a place lower to go to serve your brother, to lay down your life, and a way to express Jesus, because Jesus took the lowliest place, and Jesus said, if you take the lowliest place, you'll be exalted. But the heart of lower still is seeking where is lower now. And so there's a place even in your life that God is manufactured or set you up to find lowliness and to find Him, because He is in the low place. And Coin number three, love looks like something. I love that phrase because uh, in our ge in our generation, love has been an abstract term where it's thrown around so much. But to remind ourselves that love has an expression, that Jesus' love for us looked like something and looked like Him dying on the cross. Jesus' love for us looked like Him living 33 years like a man on the earth. Je the love of God looked like something where the Father gave His Son to the world, right? So love looks like something. And so for my life, when I've been in different circumstances, I'm reminded that love looks like something. So I'm, if I'm seeking to be a lay down lover, if I'm seeking to be one that loves God and loves people, I'm looking to express love rightly. So I'm not just saying I love you, but I'm saying God teach me to love because love looks like something. And I don't want to just have the words, I want to have a rightful expression, the expression that's in your heart for me to demonstrate your heart, your heart through me. So those are my three favorite phrases from Heidi Baker. If you have any fr favorite phrases that she says, comment below and we'll, we'll have it in the discussion time. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know uh, I didn't have much of the conference, but this is, the vlogs are for the conference. It's for the people. It's for you to hear. I hope you enjoyed those few testimonies I put out there. So thanks for joining me in this video. I hope it encouraged you and I hope you continue to be a lay down lover for Jesus that seeks to love God and love people rightly. God bless you guys. Peace.